Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and in this video I'm going to explain how to find the distance between the genes based on the recombination frequency between the genes. So here is a problem, two genes in a corn are on the chromosome number 7 are identified by the recessive alleles, glossy leaves, GL and branch leaves, RA for Ramosa, when a plant heterozygous for each locus was crossed with a homozygous recessive plant, the following progeny resulted, see the table, what is the frequency recombination between these two loci. So here is the table and what this table tell us? This table tell us that we have one parent who is heterozygous for both traits, so imagine that this is um, two chromosomes of one parent and one parent we are told is heterozygous. So let's say we have locus here and another locus here. The first gene is GL, so this parent is heterozygous at this locus, so would be GL and GL here. So two different alleles in the same locus. So this is the same gene, but different versions of this gene. One is dominant, another is recessive. And as for the second trait, this parent also heterozygous for the second locus. So it's going to be RA and RA. If I would solve this problem, I'm not going to use this L here. It's just enough that capital G and small g, small r and capital R. So I think this is just excessive to use more letters than one to specify two genes, especially if genes has uh, different names. So start with different letters. So no need to add extra letters. It's just cause a confusion. But I'm just keeping the notation that we have here. And we have to cross with another parent who is homozygous recessive, according to our problem. So the genotype of the second parent have to be, so one chromosome, another homologous chromosome, and in the locus GL, we are going to have recessive allele GL here and GL here. We are also going to have in the locus RA two recessive alleles RA. This parent two is homozygous recessive for both genes, for both loci. And parent one is going to be heterozygous for both genes, for both loci. So this is going to be parent one and this is going to be parent two. What kind of progeny we can expect if we cross these two genotypes? And the first variant would be, take a look, for example, parent one in its gametes can contribute this chromosome. So from parent one, one variant would be that progeny is going to inherit this chromosome intact. So this is going to be first variant when we are going to have capital G L here and small r a here. And from the parent two, it doesn't matter which chromosome it's going to inherit, both chromosomes are identical. So for us, it doesn't matter which one. We know for sure that from the parent two, uh, in the locus GL, we are going to have recessive allele, and in the locus RA, we are going to have also recessive allele. So this is number one variant of the progeny. What other variants possible? Imagine that the progeny are going to get this chromosome from the parent one. So let's list it here. So it's going to be chromosome number two of the parent one. And in the locus GL, we are going to have this time small GL, recessive allele, and in the locus RA, we are going to have dominant allele RA. And again, from the parent two, this progeny only can inherit one type of the chromosome with recessive alleles in each locus. So this is going to be second variant of the genotype in the progeny. First variant, 
second variant. What other variants are possible? Now imagine that between genes GL or locus GL and locus RA crossing over happened. So let's put a crossing over here. Parent one in this case would produce following variants capital GL and capital RA. So this is going to be one chromosome capital GL and capital RA. And again, parent two can contribute any of these chromosomes. We don't care because uh, the same recessive um, alleles we are going to find here are a recessive allele. And another variant of the chromosome, new recombinant chromosome that is going to result as a result of this crossing over is going to be a chromosome which is going to be small or recessive GL and recessive RA. So let's also write it down here and it's going to be recessive GL and recessive RA. And parent two only can contribute a chromosome with two recessive alleles, GL recessive and RA recessive. So genotypes number three and genotypes number four of the progeny are going to be result of the recombination. We do not see such genotypes in appearance. And the first variant would be parental genotypes. So we would see whole chromosome from parent one with no recombination and whole chromosome from the parent two, whole chromosome from the parent one and whole chromosome from the parent two. But variant number three is going to be recombinant dominant allele and dominant allele on the same chromosome. And parent two only can contribute chromosome with two recessive alleles, even if crossing over will happen between these two genes and this is what might happen, but still we are going to get two recessive alleles on the same chromosome. You also should understand that the greater distance between genes, the greater chances that crossing over will happen between these two genes. If two genes or two loci uh, would be on the very tip of the chromosome, then probability that crossing over would happen would be 50%. And then we are going to have in a progeny 25% of this genotype, 25% of this genotype, 25% of this genotype, and 25% of this genotype. But if two genes would be close enough, for example, if we move this gene up to here, probably no crossing over would happen at all. So we will have only this uh, progeny with this genotype, uh, which would represent 50% and 50% and we are not going to see these variants at all. But if the distance between the genes would be enough to allow sometimes crossing over happen between these genes, we will see all four variants. But of course, these two would dominate and these two would be in much smaller quantities. We call this parental genotypes and this we call recombinants. Now please pay attention to this table, what we see here. Here is the genotype of one chromosome, here is the genotype of the second chromosome, and as you see in all four variants, second chromosome has the same genotype. So this represents this chromosome, which progeny inherit from parent two. So it's just good to know. So now we can pay all our attention to this part and you see here uh, these genotypes would represent these chromosomes and recombinations. We have two variants which are like dominating here or prevailing. So this is going to be parental genotypes, this is going to be one and this is going to be the second. And this represent a genotype which is going to be here and this small gl capital ra is going to be this genotype and the second as you see the same so you see how numbers are different and these two represent recombinants capital gl and capital ra 
we do not see here. It's only possible only if crossing over happened. So let's put six here, which tell us that we have such six uh, recombinants in a progeny. And another recombinant variant would be small gl small ra. We are going to have four such variants and this is going to be this variant here. This is going to be a recombinant. And you may ask why we have six here and four here. If we have a recombination here, these numbers should be the same. And these numbers uh, also have to be the same. It's uh, not a pure mass because this is alive. Seeds can die. Seeds sometimes can be not viable. So numbers are going to be just very close to each other. Those which represent parental variants and those which represent recombinants. When you will have such problem on your exam, you don't have to waste your time to draw a picture like this. I just use it for explanation so you would understand it at the deep level how to solve these problems, what's happening here. But on your exam, just look for the genotypes with highest numbers, which would represent those which are going to be non-recombinant or parental genotypes and other with uh, smallest numbers, which also have to be close to each others would represent genotypes, which resulted in recombination. Now, the last step is very easy. We just have to add recombinants. So six plus four is going to be 10 divided by total number of the progeny. So 10 divided by 200 is going to be 0 0.05 or 5%. How I got 5%? I just multiply this number by 100 and this is how we get answer in percentage form. Number of recombinants equal to 5%. And it's Owen turn. It tells us the distance between these two genes, five centimorgans. So five centimorgans because 1% of the recombination frequency equals to one centimorgan. If we have 5%, that means that between these two genes between these two loci, the distance is five centimorgans. And one more note, how do I know that one chromosome of the parent one is capital GL and small RA and not, for example, capital GL and capital RA. And here we will have two recessive alleles. In both uh, these variants, we are going to have both loci that is going to be heterozygous. I have a hint, I just so before making this video, which genotypes are prevailing and I have found that this genotype is prevailing and this genotype is prevailing. That means that initial genotype of this parent have to be capital GL and small RA on one chromosome and other chromosome have to be small GL and capital RA. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.